Good evening, everyone. Happy Tuesday, April the 11th. I had to think for a minute. Uh, it's been a crazy couple of weeks. I wasn't even sure what day it was, but here we are on Tuesday. I see Carmen tuning in. I see a bunch of other people tuning in. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight uh, for Learning Live. And I feel like no, Chris was last week. I was going to say, I feel like you've got me a couple weeks in a row, but that's not true. Chris was last week while we were away, and uh, she did some awesome stuff then. Um, but you got me tonight, and you got me tomorrow night. Um, actually, didn't I do last Wednesday? Last Wednesday was our Better Press presentation, and that's pretty darn exciting. That was a really exciting reveal. I'm so excited to be able to bring that to you. Uh, tonight, we are going to switch gears a little bit. And I am going to be talking to you tonight about the Gina K polyglaze sheets. Um, if you have not guessed by now, foiling is kind of the hot trend these days. Everybody likes a little bit of foil on their projects, whether it's card making, whether it's your scrapbooking, whether it's your traveler's notebooks, all those different projects. And there are many ways that you can get foil on your project. And as technology develops, we are getting um, easier and easier ways at our disposable, or sorry, at our disposal uh, to do all of this. And the latest innovation uh, is this polyglaze sheet from Gina K. Now, this is similar to the toner method. So back in the day, uh, you could print things on your laser printer. You could print them, uh, anything with toner. There were toner sheets that you could purchase. And you would use uh, transfer foil. I'm going to just grab my little tube here. This is deco foil. It's black and shiny, so it's probably not going to show up very well on the camera. But this is deco foil. Uh, what we have is iCraft. Uh, I did have someone ask, is that different than thermal web? It is 100% the same thing. Uh, I think they are either sister companies or just two names for the same company. So as long as you are using transfer foil, these are called transfer sheets. Let's see if I can, there we go, transfer sheets. This will work for this method. Now, what people found with that uh, black toner method is that sometimes you did get little black flecks where you did not uh, want those flecks to be. So this is a new innovation from Gina. She did some research and uh, with her partners, uh, I believe at Thermal Web, so I'm not 100% sure, they have developed, essentially it is a clear ink. Now what they did is they tinted it an ever so uh, tiny bit uh, with gray so that you can see the pattern on your paper. Now, when I first saw these online, I thought that there would be a raised finish, almost like it was embossed with clear ink. That is not the case. It is very flat and smooth on the paper, and uh, it really is literally just an ink that has been used to print the pattern on the page. Now, talking a little bit about the product itself, uh, the polyglaze sheets, you can get them in different patterns. I brought a few home. Um, we didn't order very deep on these. They were they were pretty new, but we had a couple of customers who uh, really wanted to give them a try, and they've been going really quickly. So there may only be a couple of certain ones left, but if you miss out on one of these patterns that I show, or if you check out Gina K and see all the different patterns she has available, just let us know, and we are more than happy to uh, bring them in with our next order. And like I said, they've been quite popular. So we will definitely be restocking these uh, with our next order. So I'm just showing you a couple of um, background patterns. There is also a couple of sentiment uh, polyglaze sheets. There are some flowers as well. I did not bring those home. Uh, but tonight I am really going to be playing with the uh, catch a wave pattern. And not only am I gonna show you how to use this um, and how to actually transfer the foil onto your polyglaze sheet, I'm gonna show you two ways to do that. Yeah, two ways to transfer the foil onto uh, your polyglaze sheet. And then time permitting, I'll show you a couple ways 
that you can use this when it's done. Uh, because once it's boiled, there's there really the possibilities are endless. Um, so what do you need? What do you need to foil with polyglaze sheets? Well, obviously you need polyglaze sheets and you get 10 sheets in a pack. So you can do lots of practicing. I would say to start with, just pick one and do some practicing and see all the different things that you can do with this. Uh, you need the transfer sheets. So again, we've got the deco foil and the rolls. The other thing I can show you, and this is just a hint because this was a sample that I got from the trade show last week, but we have ordered uh, some of these. Uh, TCW also has foil transfer sheets that perfectly match shades of stencil butter. This is a new color, green pair, and very fortunate that I landed with the green pack when they were passing around the free samples. Shock. So Matt says, shocker, uh, made sure. I was, you know, I was sitting right on the aisle. So as they passed them to me and I had to pass them down the row, I got to choose the color I wanted. Uh, the primary way that we are going to be uh, demonstrating this is with a laminator. So this is just a really basic, uh, I'm just gonna clear some space here. AKA really basic, AKA cheap uh, laminator that I picked up at Walmart. Now this was probably four or five years ago. I want to say it was 25 bucks. As long as you've got uh, something that's going to transfer heat and pressure, you don't need to spend a whole lot. Now I know Gina and Jennifer McGuire, they have recommended um, higher end uh, laminators as well as the mink machine from Heidi Swap. All of those will work. Um, as long as you have heat and pressure in that, uh, if you've ever seen any of my foiling demonstrations, whether it's with the transfer gel, whether it is with um, the foil, like the, the glimmer machine, that kind of thing, foil transfers with heat and pressure. The real difference between all of these different methods is how you apply the heat and how you apply uh, the pressure and then what that sticky medium is in between. Now I say sticky, but again, this is smooth. This is just an ink. So it doesn't stick. You could not put glitter on here. You could not put embossing powder on here. It would just fall right off. But this is the proper um, chemical makeup in order to transfer this transfer foil to the sheet. Do not use your glimmer foil. Do not use the foil that you will use for the uh, glimmer machines or the go press and foil machines. They will not work. It is only this transfer um, foil that is going to work. The last thing you're going to need is a piece of parchment paper or a piece of copy paper. Uh, I know again Gina has um, some carrier sheets which are like a plastic folder but you don't need those. You really just need uh, something to hold and carry your foil through the machine. Now with the, the laminator you want to put it on the hot, a hot setting. Mine has a, ch a a choice of three mils or five mils. You do want heat because it is a slightly thicker material, so you want to go to five. I've had this heating up, so it is really nice and hot. Be careful you don't burn your fingers. Uh, the other thing that, uh, and it just turned off on me. I'll, I'll get to that in a little second. Okay, so what do we do? What do we do? We're going to foil one of these transfer sheets. So I'm gonna take my parchment paper, I have folded it in half, and I've got it so that it'll fit, whoops. You're off camera. It'll fit in my little slot here. Uh, you can go this way. I personally prefer to go fold side in just so it really grabs and holds everything in place. I'm gonna take my transfer sheet. I also need some foil. So you know what? Now let's use, what other colors have I got in here? Oh, you know what? I've got black. Let's use black. So I'm just gonna pull some black out here and pull one little sleeve, one little sheet sheet of this black foil. Careful but, you say that. Matt says careful. <laughs> I need to be careful what I say. Tongue twisted a little bit. Okay, I'm just gonna put this over here. I'm gonna get out my foil cutter. This is the tool that I use for my hot foil uh, cutting. I can also use it for this 
as long as I can find the actual little cutter, which is back here. So I'm just going to take this apart. I'm going to lay my foil out and right to the edge. I know that this is an A2 card panel, so I just need to go a teeny tiny bit bigger and just slice it down. This can slide away. Come on, fingers. Okay. And grab my foil. All right. Don't need the lid. Keep my trimmer so I don't lose it. All right, back to my sandwich. So I'm going to open up my parchment. I'm going to tuck my polyglaze sheet right here in the crease. I'm going to take my black and put it right over top. And I'm going to close my sandwich down. I like to kind of give it a little tap so everything just drops really nicely into that fold. And then here we go. And it's just going through the machine. So when you get a, a laminator, um, play with it a little bit first before you get your first project ready to go. I remember when I first took this out of the box, I kept trying to shove the foil in this way because all the machines I had seen went in this way and then i actually read the instructions so take them take a moment read the instructions that is sherry's lesson of the day then i'm going to open this up it already looks beautiful and presto magico that looks pretty. look how beautiful that is now what i did find is the longer i left this on the better the transfer i got uh, let me find my other samples here. Are they on the bottom of my pile? They're on the bottom of my pile. So here it is with the green. Can't tell the difference on the camera. And here it is with the blue. And Matt's saying it's not the color's not transferring super well. Uh, maybe if I get that light shining just so. But because this is a very delicate pattern, you are going to get a uh, very delicate color. And I'll show you a couple different ways that you can um, bring that color out just a little bit. While we're at it, I am going to do one more because I want to do a rainbow. I've got some rainbow foil in here. I want to see what that looks like on this particular pattern. So let me get my, and I usually just keep my stuff back in the roll. I've got a bunch of different ones in here. Let me pull this guy out. Whoops. And now all of them come out. Oh, look, here's one that is already somewhat cut. Is that going to fit? A little bit sticky. Yeah, that's going to fit perfectly. So now I don't need to cut. I'm just going to transfer all my extra foil over here. My laminator still says it's ready. So that's how you know when it is hot. Grab another sheet and, oh, I've got one there. So tuck my sandwich into the fold, tuck my foil down here into the fold, fold it up, give it a little tap, 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 and here we go. Now, if you find that your sheet is not foiling as cleanly as you would like, um, heat and pressure. We've got the heat up as high as we can. So maybe put an extra piece of cardstock in your sandwich as well. And that will help give you a little bit of extra pressure, um, just like a shim. Just like a shim when you are die cutting, just add a little bit of extra behind everything still in your parchment paper, but behind your polyglaze sheet, and that'll give it a little bit extra oomph. And here we go. Oh, so pretty. It's so pretty. And again, maybe it's not going to show up super well on the camera, but trust me, absolutely gorgeous. So that is the first way that you can use the polyglaze sheets. Now, what happens uh, Jay Laval says uh, they can't find them online. If you just type in the word polyglaze, you should be able to find it. I believe it is all one word. 
try either with or without the hyphen. They should be in there. Matt's on it. He's going to see if he can find find those for you. So first option is to go out and buy a laminator. But what happens if you don't want to buy a laminator? Maybe you have something else that you could use instead. And so over here, heating up, for all of you who have jumped on the glitter train, guess what? You can use your glimmer. Now, we are using this for heat and pressure. We are not using plates. We are not using the hot foil foil. We are still using the same materials, just a different machine. So I've got my, got my platinum six. I've got my glimmer plate with this one you're not going to get as much heat so you really really want to make sure that this gets heated up beautifully uh, margaret is asking is the sheet done with uh, with the design pre-done yes those are pre-done as i mentioned off the top margaret maybe you were late tuning in uh, these are pre-printed you get 10 sheets of one pattern in the pack and there are, she has just started coming out with them. So there are a handful of patterns right now, but there will be more coming out. So here we have our glimmer. I've got my plates. The other thing I have, because there are no foil plates going through this, there are no dies going through this, I need some extra oomph. So I've got three cardstock shims. You'll be showing what to do with these after the I, Matt is asking, am I going to be showing what to do? Absolutely. I'm going to give you some techniques and some things that you can do with these once they are foiled. Um, using your glimmer, heat it up, heat it up well. Get your extra shims, get your die cutting machine. Let's see if I have enough room. I'm not sure. Oh, I'm sort of on camera here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put my pattern on the on the heat, I need to cut some foil. This time I think just because it's easy, I'm going to use the green foil. And grab a little sheet of this. And because of the size that it already is, it's already a six by six, I'm not going to cut it down. Oh, I do not like this packaging. What I would recommend is that you take your foil out of the package so that you don't keep catching it on the sticky part and um, maybe put it in one of the Avery Al sleeves. Question from a YouTube user, uh, Sandy, uh, can you use the negative foil? Uh, Sandra on YouTube is asking if we can use the negative foil. Hang with me. I'm going to try something. I have not tried it in practice, but I'm going to try something with that. So just hang with me and we will answer that question. So here I'm putting the foil on. I'm going to put my shims on and I'm going to put my plates on. So I am loading it all up now before I hit the timer button. And I'm just gonna let that heat up. Let's get this guy opened up. I am still using the polyglaze. I am still using the transfer foil, not hot foil. There's no metal going through here. It is just those sheets. We are using the glimmer simply for your heat and your pressure. I'm gonna just slide it over here. I'm just waiting for my timer button to go off. Um, so yes, we are gonna show some ways that you can use them. These are just on, I don't even know what weight this cardstock is. It feels like it is 80 pounds, maybe even less. Does it say on the package? It does not say on the package. I'm going to say it may even be a 65 pound weight. So you can die cut it. You can just trim it down and put it on your card base. I'm actually going to show you some extra things you can do with it as well. But I really want to show you how this works. Just waiting for that timer. I'm going to get my glass of water. Light is solid now. Oh, Matt says my timer's gone off. So let me come back over. Put the red lights on. Red light is the power button, so that's okay. I got my red light is my power. The platform is ready. The timer is now complete. So, and it's just going through. Here you are going to have a little bit of resistance because of those shims. And I'm going to go forward 
go slowly so that that heat and that pressure is transferring. I probably went too fast on that, but I'm going to come back slowly as well. Heat and pressure, keywords for today. One more click. I'm going to load it back on my docking station. The laminator might look easier. The laminator might be easier, but if you already have a Glimmer machine and you don't want to go and buy a laminator, then use the tools at your disposal. All right. There's the magic. I need a little pokey tool to lift this up off the heat. Here we go. And I will say that of all the ones that I've done here on camera, this one may even have a little bit of overfoiling. So I may have had, had it on the heat a little bit too long. But again, just a great way to show you that you can use the tools you've got if you don't want to go and buy a laminator. So for 25 bucks, if that's still the price on that Scotch laminator, it's really not a huge investment. All right. So that is really the basics of foiling with these polyglaze sheets. I'm just gonna turn all my hot things off so that they can start to cool down. And we'll, we'll, do, we'll play a little bit with what you do with these once they are foiled. So if you don't have a project in mind, I just recommend that you um, foil them in a bunch of different colors and that way you can get everything out once, get them all ready to go, and then you have them ready for when you have um, a project in mind. So that's the green one. Okay, before we before I get into the techniques, let's try let's try the negative. So with this transfer foil, the key thing with this is it transfers either with the toner or here now the polyglaze, but they also transfer with sticky things. So I'm just opening up. I've got a sample sheet here of some double-sided adhesive. I've just got a basic sheet of um, cardstock. I'm just going to cut down a little piece of this adhesive. You could use your uh, die cut and bond. You could even just use your score tape if you have um, if you have strips because you really just want something that is sticky. So that's like that. And to peel one side here. Now, like I said, I am. I am theorizing that this is going to work. I have not tried it yet. So, you know, as much as I said to Matt, I practiced with the foil. I knew what it's going to do. I was not going to have an internet failure. Ah. You never know. Plan B may be such the failure. All right. So I have simply applied that double-sided adhesive to my cardstock. I'm now going to peel the other side. The other backing here, and I have a sticky surface. You know what? Let's do the rainbow just because it's beautiful. All Tara, right. Tara has her fingers crossed for you. Tara's got her fingers crossed. Thank you, Tara. You've always got my back. The key will be lining this up. So in future, I might want to go bigger. But, and I'm just trying to roll it down so that I can keep as few bubbles out as possible all right everybody cross, cross your fingers cross your toes hold your breath drum roll dun, oh, da, da, da. That the this one you don't have to put through the heat because it's just sticky okay so something's not sticking over here that's okay that's okay so the theory is holding maybe this adhesive is a little bit too sticky yeah, it's actually tearing my paper here. But again, in theory, the theory holds. I was absolutely able to transfer. Now, it is still a little bit sticky. <laughs> Matt, Matt I found that really funny. What I would recommend is that you take uh, your powder tool or even just kind of handle it a little bit to get that sticky down. Just be aware of that. So you can now take this and run it through a die cutting machine and do all kinds of fun things with it. So back to Sandra's question, 100% you can use the uh, negative side, the negative piece with your um, adhesive sheets. 
you the, the, right now there is no negative for the polyglaze. You just have to kind of use that theory that it'll apply to something sticky. And here, there's there it is, nice and close. So you can still see the beautiful pattern. You can see kind of where we'd have to work around and put an embellishment or something. But that is the idea. So that is one way. Uh, Tara said you can use it for die cutting with some powder. Absolutely. A little bit of powder will go a long way. All right. So now, what do we do with these panels? 100%, you could just take these panels, trim them down, throw some flower die cuts on there, throw some embellishments on there, um, use it as a card. But what else can you do with it? Well, the nice thing about these is that they will resist ink. Um, I'm going to start with the black one. And I'm going to grab, I'm just going to grab some pink ink. I've got my hero, my hero cubes here. Actually, uh, yeah, I've got pink because I think I've got a pink brush. So I'm going to grab my taffy and my brushes here in my little bag. So I'm going to grab this. And so one thing you can do is you can ink blend over this. So I can just come in and. Doesn't that take away some of the shine of the foil? It does not. Matt's asking about if it takes away the shine of the foil. It does a little bit when you put the ink on, but then all you're going to do is take a tissue or a paper towel or a cloth and buff it when it's done. And it, this this will resist. This will resist the. Uh, this will resist the ink and give you, um, give you back that shine. Sorry, I'm trying to pick colors at the same time. This one is orange. Can you ink blend before you put the foil on? So Matt's asking if we can ink blend before. Um, I the, the short answer is I don't know. Um, all the videos that I watched uh, between Gina and uh, Jennifer McGuire, they did the foiling first. So I'm not sure how the ink will affect like the colored ink will affect the polyglaze ink. For right now, I would recognize, um, not recognize, I would recommend that you do the foiling first. Tara is saying, I've heard that if you run a heat tool over them, then the ink blending, uh, then the shine will come back. You know what, that's, that's worth a try. I, I've used all my plugs for my heat tool, for the heating things, but uh, even just looking at it now, the, the shine is still there going to be a little hard to show on camera but there you can ink blend over it and then what you could do is you could uh, take a die for example I've got uh, one of my spellbinders dies here this floral reflections I could take one of those where's my the next one down they slid on me I must stand. Oh, am I getting ahead of me um, Matt is asking about stamping. I have not tried stamping on these yet. Um, Gina usually uses uh, sentiment strips for her stamping, so or for her sentiments. So I really don't know. And just trying to find my spellbinder plates. I can't find them, so we're gonna switch to the other machine. Fortunately, I've got all the machines here behind me. It's an equal opportunity Facebook Live today. All right, I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to take this guy. If I can get it up. Like I said, my fingers aren't working super well tonight. And let's do it. Well, let's do it this way. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. So this will actually give us two different things that we can do you can take and just cuts like butter so you could take this shape and put it on a project you could then take this shape trim it down and put it on a project so ink blending absolutely a thing um what else can you do with it i've seen a couple of videos from gina so this is obviously something that she's quite passionate about you can use your Copic markers or your alcoholic markers on, on these pieces as well. So I've just got my 
brand new coloristas. I'm going to take the blue one. And I'm going to take maybe some yellow. And I can just go in and color the wave. And then maybe over on this one, that's another color. Here's a pink. This is Blossom. I can do this one in pink. And so on and so forth. So you can color up your strips. You can color the background. You can do whatever coloring you wanted and use your alcohol ink markers on here as well. Given the thinness of the paper, I would not personally recommend watercolor. Uh, I just think um, I just think that the paper wouldn't withstand. Uh, Jane is saying that Gina just wiped with a paper towel when blending. Yeah, that's what I figured. You just take a cloth, paper towel, something like that to just kind of buff up the shine. Uh, you are going to uh, be able to bring all of that back. Um, Again, here I'm going to go in with a lighter blue. So you could really create this into a beautiful um, multicolored piece of artwork. So there you go. And lastly, I'm going to try one last thing, which I saw, I think maybe on a Jennifer McGuire video. Um, on that first one, I used colored ink. Well, this time, this time I'm going to get sassy and I'm going to use black ink. I'm going to use black ink and I'm going to do it on that rainbow. Now, this is an older pack, so I'm not sure how juicy it is. Your fingers aren't working very well. No, my fingers really aren't working well tonight. But. Oh, you're covering it all up. Never fear. Oh. Never fear. So here we go, and it, this would work really well if you could really build up the black intensity. I'm going quickly with a dry pad, so. The camera's still, the camera's still picking up some specks of sparkle. Excellent, so yeah. we're still seeing sparkle. We're still seeing color, and this actually really brings out the color a lot more by having that darker background. And let me just grab a cloth here. Oh yeah, just buffing it really brings it to life. So again, it's not showing up super well in the camera, but uh, it really is quite beautiful. The there we go, there we go. Reflective things and studio lights, not always a great combination. But there you go. So you can color, you can ink blend, you can die cut. You can, you know, I, ha I had thoughts of um, potentially, like, could you do strips of different colors? You probably want to kind of um, piece the foil down, tape them down with your uh, Spellbinders uh, Best Ever Craft Tape just to keep it in place. But lots and lots of different ways that you can use these polyglaze sheets. And there you have it. Matt, did I miss any questions? I think, think we covered everything. If you guys have any more questions about these polyglaze sheets, don't hesitate to reach out to us. And um, there's also lots of videos. Gina has done has started doing Foiling Friday. So if you go and check out her videos, there is tons and tons of stuff. And before I let you go, before I let you go, I do have something that I uh, maybe promised or suggested. A little sneaky peeky. That has nothing to do with Polyglaze. I know it doesn't have anything to do with polyglaze, but I know, I know I've got some Lawn Fawn fans on here. So let me sneaky peeky. There will be more information tomorrow. But there is a brand new exclusive uh, stamp set uh, that only independent stores and only select independent stores have access to. Now, the real catch to this is uh, you need to come into store. This is an in-store promotion only uh, by agreement with Juan Juan. Any in-store 
purchase of Lawn Fawn, $45 or more, and this is the Canadian pricing, you will get this adorable, uh, you are so amazing stamp set for free, April 12th to 24th. So it is launching tomorrow. There will be more information uh, coming out in the next, well, I'll do a post in the morning. It'll be in the newsletter on Thursday, uh, but we do hope to see you in store. Or while supplies last. While supplies last, uh, this is a test. This is something new that we are partnering with Lawn Fawn uh, to give it a try and um, help support local independent stores. So definitely come in and see us, come in and see this cute little stamp set. And while supplies last, you can get it for free with a $45 Lawn Fawn purchase. All right, folks, that's me signing off. I will be right back here tomorrow night because we have a big announcement to share with you. Um, and Matt's rolling his eyes because he's like, another one, another one. We've got a new brand that we are introducing to the store and introducing to all of you. I'm going to show you all the things. Some of you have already discovered it on the website. Uh, so hopefully don't give away the secret too, too much. Uh, but I will be sharing all the things. Because, you know, we're, <laughs> we're still catching up from being away. We don't actually have a ton of what's new to share with you. But what's better than a brand new brand, some brand new products for you to fall in love with, and uh, a rainbow of color to share. All right, everyone, have a wonderful, wonderful evening, and we'll see you back here tomorrow night. Good night.